Let us pray. Lord, as your scriptures are read and proclaimed this day, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts, our minds, and our very lives may be transformed by them. Thank you for your gift of Holy Scripture, we pray. Amen. What is the weirdest thing you have ever seen? No, don't look at the person next to you. That's not what I meant. So, funny, just last night, this happened to my brother and I. We were, uh, he was dropping me off at my house, and we were uh, coming, uh, coming down the, the back way from Carroll, down Slough Road, uh, and um, we, we, we come around this corner, and it's starting to get dark. And as we come around this corner, on it, I am not making this up, my brother goes, what is that? on the side of the road, and, and there's like a, some fields over here where, we, where you kind of, sort of near where somebody used to live. Um, and what I thought were Christmas decorations, my brother said were two little girls, and they were kneeling down doing something as we drove by. And my brother goes, what do you think that was? I said, I don't know. He said, well, we should turn around and see if it's still there. And I said, no, we shouldn't. <laughs> if it's still there, it's just two little girls playing, and we're going to look creepy. <laughs> and if it's not there, I'm not going to sleep ever again. <laughs> Either way, I don't want any part of this, so we just drove home. But what's the creepiest thing you've ever seen? In our story today, King Belshazzar and his group of friends see the creepiest thing they have ever seen, a hand without a body. <laughs> Think of thing. All right. This is where churches have been known to divide themselves. <laughs> Who here was a Munsters fan? Or is a Munsters fan? Who here likes the Adams family better? See, Munsters fans, Adams family fans, you know, you got those rival weird families going. I personally always kind of like the Munsters better. Um, because I guess I always wanted a dragon to live under our steps. But the Adams family, and of course, that's thing. And uh, um, interesting fact, do you know whose hand that is? Lurch. Lurch. Yep, it's Lurch. Yep. And, and, and after, the, after I read that, I was like, you're right. They're hardly ever in the same scene together. Um, so imagine thing from the Adams family just appearing and writing something on a wall. That would be kind of scary, wouldn't it? And to make it even more disconcerting, the words that were written by this hand, nobody knew. Nobody knew. Now, we need a little bit of background as to why this was occurring. See, King Belshazzar was the son of the great King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had taken the Babylonian Empire to great heights. He had uh, conquered 
the Syrians. He had conquered most of his Near Eastern rivals, including the land of Israel. And he had carried off about a quarter of the Jews. But it wasn't just random quarter of the people. He, he carried off those who had skills that the Babylonians could use. And so it would be like somebody coming into your country and taking one out of every four people, but taking those who had valuable skills, people who could make things that were needed for everyday life, people who were very intelligent and, and, and could help solve problems, uh, people who held important positions. And one of these people who were carried off was a young man named Daniel. Well, one night, Belshazzar, who has now become king after Nebuchadnezzar's death, decides to hold a banquet with his friends and, and, and other government officials. And he decides that the best thing to do were, were to go and to grab the cups and the other items that the Babylonians had stolen from the temple in Jerusalem. These items were used to give offerings to God in the temple by the priests. Now remember, for the Jews, the temple was the place where God was. God would come to earth there during these uh, uh, um, you know, religious ceremonies. These items were used to honor the almighty God. These were holy relics, holy items, sacred items. And Belshazzar decided to use them to pour wine to get drunk out of, to make fun of the Jews and their God. In the middle of these festivities, this hand appears, and it begins to, to write these, these words that, 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 that no one can, can figure out. There was one person who knew what this meant. And so Daniel was sent for because someone had said, you know what, I think that Jewish boy, Daniel, he's pretty smart. He'll know what these words mean. And so he comes and he interprets what they mean. And to make a long story short, what they say is, Belshazzar, your reign is going to be short. And your kingdom is going to be divided between your two greatest enemies. Now, the cool thing about Daniel is before Daniel had done this, he had been offered all kinds of things by King Belshazzar. And Daniel says, look, you can keep your stuff. I don't want it. See, I'm not better than anybody else because I have this gift. God is giving me this gift to read what, what, what this says, and, and I'm going to use it because this is what God wants me to do. This reminds me of, of us. See, God has given each and every one of us unique gifts to serve him. And each and every one of us can use these gifts. And it doesn't make one person better than another because somebody has a certain gift and another person doesn't. They're all meant to work together to serve the Lord. For instance, you don't want me singing. You don't. You can ask them upstairs where they can hear what comes through my microphone. Right? This, that's why I have to keep Brian uh, uh, happy because if not, he'll... He'll let you hear what I sing. And yes, he will. All right? But you guys 
have the gift that I don't have. Now, does it make them better than me? No. Well, you know. Um, I, guess it's, I guess it's all a matter of opinion, but uh, no, right? It's just different. So remember that, my friends. Each of us have a unique gift that can be used to serve God, and it doesn't make one person better than the other. Something else this story does that I just love, and it shows that no matter what is is going on in your life, no matter what you're facing, God is there for you. See, Belshazzar was full of pride. He was pushing people around left and right. And some of us face similar things in our own lives. Maybe not a person, maybe a person, but maybe not a person. Maybe a disease or, 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 or maybe a, uh, uh, a situation. But whatever it is that's tormenting us, God is going to see us through. See, there comes a time when the writing on the wall appears. And it's the revelation that God's hand is in all things. Because see, at the time this happened, many many of the, uh, the, the Jews thought that they were never going to have any sort of relief from the Babylonians. And what the writing on the wall did, this writing on the wall said, I am with you, and your freedom from oppression is right around the corner. Right around the corner. Even if you don't see it now, it's there. So my friends, know this, that whatever monster or bully you are facing today, this week, this year, remember that God is always reaching out to us. And we must be willing to take the hand of God and trust. Trust that the hands of God will get us through whatever monsters we are facing. Whatever it is, God has a plan. And sometimes in order to understand that plan, we need somebody else to come alongside us and to help us see what God is doing. And that's the glory of being a part of a church. It's because at times, other Christians can help us see the work that God is doing in our lives. So my friends, know that we each have unique skills and gifts and that God is with us no matter what we are facing. The story of Daniel brings us comfort and gives us challenge. Let us think about that this week. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful story of of a brave young man who has a unique gift, who uses it freely to serve you, which reminds us each that we have a gift from you. Show us what that gift is. Show us how we can use it. And Lord, this story also reminds us that no matter what bully we are facing in life, be it an illness, uh, a broken relationship, even a person who is not treating us right, that you are with us in that situation and that you will help us through it and, and, and help show us a way 
to a better tomorrow. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Scripture, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.